Hello, floss tube. It is later than usual, but I made it this weekend. I know in my last video, I had said that I may not record this weekend, and I almost didn't, uh, but I'm here. So welcome. I'm Heather, the 20 Minute Stitcher. Thank you to those of you who have uh, are returning viewers. I appreciate, as always, the time that you give to me. If you are new to my channel, I give you the most heartfelt and warmest of wishes. I hope that you will like what you see and that you will choose to come back and spend some more time with me in the future. I only have a little bit of time today, so I'm going to get right into things. My videos sort of always have a little bit of a life update. I share my stitching, of course, any haul that I have, which I do have a little bit this week, and future plans. So we'll jump right into it. Life this week has been super busy. We had my daughter specifically, I say we, but it was just my daughter, um, had something every single evening this week. It's the end of the school year. There was the spring band concert. She made her confirmation at church. I don't know, there was softball going on. Um, and on top of all of that, my son was ill all week. So it was a very busy week. There was not a whole lot of stitching done, but enough to show and to share. So I am here with that. So we will get right into it. Those of you who are returning viewers know that I am doing a modified version of Mania. Uh, the traditional Mania is a new start every day in May. Uh, some people do a new start every week in May. Uh, I decided because I have kind of gone crazy in 2022 and I've got like hair sticking up weirdly, whatever. Um, I have kind of gone crazy in 2022 and have far many more whips in, I almost made a redundancy, whips in progress. I have far too many whips, um, many more whips than I usually do. So much so that like I can't fit anymore in the space where I store my whips. So I decided to make my mania focused on making good progress on a lot of my whips, especially some who have been neglected and lonely for a while. So I made a calendar of uh, patterns that I'm working on. And so every three days or four three days uh, in a row, I work on one of my whips. And there are a couple of new starts thrown in there just for fun. Uh, but uh, this is what I have been doing in May. So each week I have two, at least two, sometimes three, depending on where the days fall, patterns to share, work that I have made. So this week I have three patterns that I have progress on uh, because when I last recorded, I had just started um, my pattern that was starting on Sunday, May 8th. So I have that pattern and um, the second pattern and one that I started yesterday and we'll work on again some more today. Uh, so we will jump right into it. The first pattern that I was working on was my uh, mental health mental health care stitch along hashtag pattern. Um, as again, if you are a returning viewer or if you watch Candy, the 614 stitcher, uh, or any others who may be doing this stitch along, uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month in addition to um, I think Asian American Pacific Islander Month uh, and all kinds of different things that we commemorate throughout the year. Uh, but one of the things that Candy, the 614 Stitcher, does each year is choose a mental health focused um, pattern to stitch during the month of May. And uh, the one she chose, I didn't have on hand. I am still trying, even though you have seen from my previous videos that I've not been being the best about stitching from stash lately. Uh, but I am trying to stitch from stash. So I went through the patterns that I already have. Uh, and um, sorry, I'm trying to find something to hide the pattern itself because it's all on one page um, and chose one that I felt fit the theme. And so that is what I am stitching for the mental health care stitch along. Um, it's hashtag mental health care Sal. Um, and it is grow through what you go through um, is the pattern. And it came from contemporary cross stitch magazine, which I honestly checked out from my library using their Libby app. So I don't really know who publishes it. I'd have to go check it out again and see. Uh, but the progress that I have made was pretty good in the three days that I worked on it. So I got, let me get some paper behind this. Um, so I got the word grow all done and the start of the banner that will have the word through. Um, this one stitch, stitches pretty quickly. As I mentioned, I have not had a lot of time for stitching lately. So um, I'm pleased with the progress on this one so far. 
So that was the first pattern of the week that I worked on, and I worked on that for May 8th, 9th, and 10th. So uh, Mother's Day was in there as well, which meant I didn't get a whole lot of stitching done that day either. Um, and kind of Mother's Day evening is when my son started to not feel well, so um, not a whole lot of stitching done. The next pattern I worked on was the I Know God pattern from Lizzie Kate. I've been working on this one for a little while. This was a new start that I think um, I think I started uh, since I started my floss tube in February. Um, and I am so close on this one, guys. I was really tempted to uh, not switch patterns, not follow my own rules, uh, and keep working on it. But this is... Uh, I have... A few, the, the last few days of May are actually reserved for returning to some of my patterns that I know I'm going to be really close to finishing after their three days, like this one. Sorry, I'm taking out of the hoop so that you can see. So I have all of the words done uh, on this one now. So all that is left on this pattern are the three sort of border lines at the bottom. And then there are a couple of buttons that go in up here where these leaves are. And then this one will be done. Uh, so I think when I do return to this one at the end of the month, I think I have it on my calendar for maybe two more days, maybe just one. Let's see, one. I have it on my calendar for two more days. So this will get done this month. I'm really excited about that. So this is I Know God. Um, it was part of the Inspiration Boxer series uh, from Lizzie Kate. And the final pattern that I worked on, and I use the term worked on, loosely. Um, I should keep this out of the hoop anyway, since I'm not going to work on it for a couple more weeks. Sorry, talking to myself. Um, get in there, needle minder. The next pattern I worked on, um, and like I said, I use the word worked loosely because I just started it last night, um, or started working on it again last night, was my positively bedeviled by meetings pattern. Come on, get out of the bag, um, which has floss all over it. So this is the, the quote from the TV show Schitt's Creek um, and will hang in my office once I have it done. Um, so again, if you recall, which you probably don't because it was a while ago, the last time I held this one out, um, the last time I showed this, um, it looked pretty much the same. <laughs> I only put about literally 30 stitches in it last night. I put these three flowers in at the bottom and I'm filling in this leaf here. Um, so this one I will work on some more tonight and tomorrow, and then I will move on to my next pattern. So not much progress on this because I just started, but uh, I'll work on it some tonight. Hopefully I have to go do some work tonight, boo. Um, so once I finish that, then I will work on this some more. So those are the, pro the patterns that I worked on this week. Um, and I'm happy to be getting some, some good progress made on those. My plans for the, for the coming week um, on my mania. So I have um, today and tomorrow for my Positively Bedeviled with meanings. And then the 17th, 18th, and 19th, I am returning to my Cats of Disney stitch along, uh, which was from Abby Sue Designs on Facebook and Etsy. Um, this was, I mean, this has been done for a long time in terms of the, the patterns being released. I'm still on Tigger, who's the very first one, because I don't know why. I love them. It's a fun pattern. They're fun to stitch, but uh, I just was lazy with it, and it didn't hold my interest for some reason. I think because it was so big, I was feeling a little intimidated by it, a little like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be stitching on this for forever. So I started some of these other smalls that I've been getting done, but now I kind of, I got to, I got to, I got to mix up my smalls and my larger patterns because my larger patterns otherwise just languish. So anyway, so I'll be working on my Cats of Disney for three days, and then I will get to start my other new start that's on the My Mania, the Haunted Fur pattern, um, which I'm excited to, to get started. So those are my plans for the week. I have a little bit of haul, including one thing that I'm super excited about. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to show you is I actually purchased... Um, so when I decided to do Stitch from Stash, I set myself some goals. I kind of went through and I chose the patterns that I wanted to stitch. Um, I've added some in and here and there, but I basically said, I want to, by June, by the time I go to StitchCon, um, I want to stitch 10 patterns. I'm not going to have 10 patterns done by StitchCon, but I set some interim goals for myself. I said, okay, if I stitch, if I get four patterns done, then I get to buy myself 
one or two ORT holders. Um, I really only have one thing to hold my, uh, you know, my leftover threads, my ORTs, um, or, you know, my scissors or anything like that. So I've been slowly, as I've been building project bags and carrying my stitching with me in more places, I've been slowly building an inventory of, you know, more pairs of scissors. Um, and the ORT holders were really what I was missing. Like, I don't have anywhere to put my loose threads when I'm stitching. So um, because I have completed at least four patterns this year, I did finally get around to purchasing my ORT holder rewards. I did buy two. I purchased them from Allegro Stitches, who has a lovely floss tube channel as well. If you have not um, watched her uh, videos, seen her channel. Um, but she also has an Etsy store where she uh, offers sewn sewing accessories, stitching accessories, things of that sort. So I got two art holders from her. The first one is uh, Mickey Mouse, a Disney themed one. I love Disney. Um, so this will probably go with my Cats of Disney Sal uh, when I start working on it again. And they're really, really nicely made. They're nice and sturdy. They're not too flimsy. Um, they have a nice snap. And then of course the felt inside uh, to hold your threads put your needle in here if you like, uh, all those things. So um, this was one that I purchased. And then the other one is this one, um, which is currently in my Positively Bedeviled by Meetings bag. I know it's Christmas because of the holly leaf and all that, but seriously, I mean, how adorable is that fox? I couldn't help it. It will be used year round. I don't care because the fox is adorable and he makes me happy. He's cute and I like cute. So uh, that was my Stitch from Stash reward that I gave myself. The other big thing that arrived this week, well, actually, I'm going to save those for last. I also, this year, um, made, a, made an exception to my stitch from, stitch from stash rule. You can tell I make several exceptions. Um, Taylor and Cromwell, who I wasn't familiar with before, in all honesty. I'd seen some of their patterns, but they have a subscription box series. And in September, their subscription box theme is Come From Away, which if you've not heard of Come From Away before, have not seen Come From Away, it is on Apple TV. Uh, it's a musical. First off, it's a stage musical. Phenomenal. And um, it is now, they, they filmed it, much like they did with Hamilton on Disney+. Plus. They filmed it. It's on Apple TV. If you have not seen it before and you have access to Apple TV, I highly encourage you to watch it. It is essentially, long story short, in the wake of September 11th, when the U.S. airspace was closed, there were 37 planes um, who were flying across the Atlantic from Europe or Africa or wherever to the U.S. who were diverted to uh, Newfoundland in Canada to a town called Gander and surrounding um, communities. And the musical is basically about this town, Gander, uh, focused on Gander, on uh, sort of this town's response to um, to this crazy occurrence and every, you know, sort of, they, they refer to it as the day the world came to town, right? Um, something like 7,000 passengers were stranded there for almost a week. Um, and it's one of those shows that when it came to Cleveland, um, the, the touring production, my family and I had tickets and we sort of were driving to the show going, I don't know, like, how on earth do you make a musical about this? And we left saying, this might be our new favorite musical. It's phenomenal. So anyway, I purchased the subscription kit because I wanted that. Um, they have several different levels. I've decided to give it a try and do a three month subscription. That one's in September. The other box I'm getting is Agatha Christie, which I believe is either July or August. And in May, the theme of the, the subscription box was six, which is also a musical about the six wives of Henry VIII. Um, my daughter loves the music, loves the musical. I also love it as well. So um, I decided to get that as well. Sort of my first experience with a subscription box. So this is a picture of what the pattern looks like. Um, and the other items that came in the box, sorry, it's gonna be noisy here for a second while I crinkle around. Uh, so the pattern or the, the kit came with the pattern, the fabric, a needle, all the floss that you need. Also came with a needle minder that says beheaded with a crown on it. Right, you know the nursery rhyme? Died, um, divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived, right? So beheaded, I got beheaded. And then this fun little Tudor Rose um, zipper pouch. So that was kind of fun, my first experience with a subscription box. 
uh, beyond the fabric of the month club that I get. And then the last thing, I'm so dorkily excited about these. Um, some more needle minders. I think you'll recall from my last video when I showed you all the needle minders that I had purchased on the day that I lost my mind. Um, was um, I had mentioned that I had also ordered some other needle minders from her. Uh, this was Needle Attractions. And first I will show you the sort of like random extra needle minder she provided, which I have to do some research because it's really funny. It's Baskin Premium Sardine Oil. I have no idea what this is but it kind of makes me smile just because it's so out there and bizarre. Um, but the three that I ordered, I am seriously like so little kid excited about these. Three of my favorite things in the whole world. So they're all on one card, so I'll just hold them all up. So, I mean, come on, these are amazing. So they're enamel. Um, so first there is the TARDIS with uh, Van Gogh Starry Night behind it which just the premise in general I love. I love Doctor Who. Um, I love Van Gogh. My dad loves Van Gogh. It's his favorite um, artist. I have stitched a little miniature Starry Night for him, so I jumped all over this. This was actually offered once before on her website a while ago, and I missed out on it. Um, so when I saw it offered this time, I jumped on it. This is Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes. I would have preferred Hobbes, but Calvin and Hobbes is my favorite comic book. I own all of the books. Uh, that were printed or comic strip. I own all of the books. Bill Watterson is a genius. And so the little Calvin, I had to have him. He's adorable. And as I told one of my friends, many will say, oh, look, it's a Grogu needle minder. Uh, to which I say, no, it's a Wicket needle minder. Um, so yes, obviously it is Grogu and he is playing with a plush Wicket doll. Wicket is one of the Ewoks from um, uh, Return of the Jedi. No, wait, oh my gosh, why am I getting the movies mixed up? Someone will correct me, I'm sure, if I'm wrong. But anyway, um, and I have always loved Wicket since I was a little kid and the movie first came out. I was Wicket for Halloween. Um, it was perfect because we lived in North Dakota at the time, so I had to wear my snowsuit under my costume, and so I was rotund and portly and short, just like the real Ewoks. Um, I have a plush Wicket doll that my children bought me the last time we went to Disney World. I, no kidding, no shame, sleep with it every single night. Um, so when I saw this needle minder, I had to have it because, I mean, seriously, it's perfect for me. So I was very excited about these three needle minders. I have been waiting to use them because I wanted to keep them on the card to share with all of you. I would love to hear from you in the comments if like what if you use needle minders, like what your favorite needle minder is or, um, you know, anything um, that uh, that you own that is a stitchy accessory or something that when you see it, you just feel all warm and fuzzy inside. It just makes you happy. Um, that is a lot of what I look for. Um, with some of the small things that I buy, buy for myself, you know, I say, listen, I try not to spend a ton of money. I try not to create a ton of waste in this world, but sometimes the things that just make you smile and bring you joy are, are worth the investment. So anyway, I'm like being weird about these needle minders. I know, but they make me so happy. So that was my, I saved the best for last, my happy little needle minders. So that's all I got friends. Um, I'm happy that I was able to spend some time with you this weekend and I look forward to seeing you next weekend when I will have uh, some more stitching to share. I had someone ask a few videos ago, um, expressed an interest in seeing sort of how I store my patterns, um, how, I, well, they asked specifically how I store my patterns. Um, I don't really have a system for storing my patterns, but I am getting ready to kind of reorganize my floss a little bit. So I think in my next video, I'll spend a little bit of time sharing that with you. Um, sort of how I am as I'm getting more and more over dyed flosses and more and more of the, like the week's dye works and the crescent colors and things of that sort. Um, I don't really, I'm trying to get away from bobbinating. The bobbinating is convenient because you can store so much in such a little space, uh, but I, I like it better when I'm able to sort of just more easily see the length of floss that I have left. And I don't know, I, I'm, I'm kind of getting away from, I like the floss drops and I like, uh, anyway, I'm rambling now at this point. So I, in my next video, I'm going to share sort of what I'm working on in terms of reorganizing my floss storage. And in future, I will show how I store my patterns. Just right now, they're all just kind of thrown in a binder and magazine sleeves. Um, there's no real organization to them. Um, I've got like, 
random and then Christmas and then Halloween and then random and some more Christmas and some more random and like they're not in any sort of order or organization whatsoever. Um, so I feel like there's not really anything to show you there. If I show it to you, they, you would be like, okay, yeah, that's nice. There's nothing special there. So <laughs> anywho's. Um, I hope all of you have had a wonderful weekend. I'm so happy I got to spend some time with you. I hope you are having a wonderful stitchy time as well and enjoying stitching on the patterns that you are currently working on. I hope you'll like and subscribe if you are new to my channel. And um, I will see you again next week. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Take care.